Well, Professor, in a previous video, you spoke about episode one of Breaking Bad, the pilot episode, and we thought maybe that would be the only episode you'd ever watch. But I understand you made a purchase recently at a secondhand store. Yes, you can see I like buying books and I go to the charity shop nearby our house quite regularly. And last week I found a box set of Breaking Bad for £5, which I thought was quite a bargain. And I thought this was a sign that we should make another video. I took out the first one. I took out the first disc and I rewatched episode one because I'd forgotten some of the details and I watched episodes two and three. So today you're going to talk about episodes two and three for us. Yes. And perhaps since it's a long time since you've seen it, perhaps I should just remind you what it shows. So in episode one, the hero or anti-hero Walter and his sidekick Jesse were surprised by gangsters. Walter defeated two gangsters by doing some chemistry that purportedly re released phosphine gas, PH3. And this overcame the gangsters. And episode one ends with the impression that both gangsters have been killed by the gas. Walter and Jesse escape by wearing gas masks while they're driving their camper van. The main point of episode two and three is how to get rid of these gangsters who were apparently dead. I found the story a bit gruesome. I don't really like unpleasant videos, but I was also irritated because I thought the chemistry was wrong. I don't mind fantasy videos where you assume the speed of light is very small or something like that. But when you are presenting that you're doing real chemistry and it's wrong, I get a bit irritated. The main problem for them is how to get rid of one of the gangsters who's a corpse. It turns out that the other one recovers. There are quite unpleasant details of what they decide to do with him. I should say that I thought the gangster who recovered bore a striking resemblance to Veritasium, the YouTuber, though slightly younger version of Veritasium. But fortunately, nothing unpleasant has happened to him. So it was decided by Walter that Jesse, his former pupil, should dissolve the corpse of the dead um, gangster in hydrofluoric acid, HF. We've done several videos with HF, and one of the problems with HF is that it is highly corrosive. So first of all, Jesse is sent off to try and buy a container that will be resistant to HF. And correctly, Walter tells him that if he uses low-density polythene... What kind of plastic, man? Polyethylene. Well, how the hell am I supposed to know that? The sort of plastic that's used for plastic buckets, it will be OK. But the problem is that Jesse can't find a big enough container to fit the corpse in. Well, he doesn't try and fit the corpse, but he tries to fit himself in quite a funny scene behind some of the stacks in the hardware store. Jesse decides to use the bath in his house, in the bathroom. And so this is where things get a bit strange. First of all, Walter has to get the HF, and he gets the HF from the school, the high school, where he's a teacher. Although there is some um, symbolic protection to stop people taking the bottles, some sort of wire mesh, I think it is totally unrealistic to believe that a high school would have that many bottles of HF. 
In fact, it's pretty unlikely they'd have any HF. The second thing is Walter takes two bottles of HF, which, of course, we don't see the label, but they look as if they could be two litres each or perhaps four litres, but less than a gallon altogether of HF. And this is where my problem comes in, because you will have seen from our videos that HF can dissolve flesh, but the HF gets used up when you dissolve flesh. So imagine there's a big bath in Jesse's bathroom and he puts in the corpse. And the first mistake appears that he puts in the corpse dressed and HF will not necessarily dissolve the clothes that the gangster's wearing. We're not told what they are and obviously I couldn't look at the labels of the clothes but they're quite likely to be in some sort of artificial fibre because not many people wear natural fibres now. But the real thing that upsets me is that a gallon of HF wouldn't be nearly as enough to dissolve a tough gangster because it gets used up. The HF isn't a catalyst, it is a chemical reagent. It's reacting with the chemicals in the gangster's body. Now, it is possible to dissolve bodies in acid, and there is the famous British murderer John Haig, who used to dissolve his victims, or dissolved several victims. There's arguments whether it was six or nine, but there's no argument that the way he did it was in drums of sulfuric acid that contained 40 gallons. So that's 40 times the amount of acid that Jesse was using. But more importantly, the people, the corpses that Haig put in the acid didn't dissolve completely. And he was finally caught because the police discovered human remains where he had dumped the acid. Of course, Professor, you have, you're having a problem with the credibility of this working, but of course it didn't work. Jesse and Walt didn't dissolve the, all the body, there was a whole bunch of it left, and of course it famously went wrong when the bath dissolved through the floor. Well, I, then, then there are several things which irritated me about that. Okay. I'm being a terrible spoil sport, but that's what you want me to do. If there isn't enough acid to dissolve the body, there won't be enough acid to dissolve the bath as well. And the bath appears to have been made with enameled metal. Enamel is essentially a glass coating on metal, and glass dissolves quite easily in HF. And the metal, which presumably is iron, would also dissolve. But then in the story, the entire ceiling comes down in the corridor below and what appears to be the remains of the gangster comes through the ceiling. And one thing which I thought was a bit disappointing is that the remains were coloured red. And if you look at our video about trying to dissolve meat in HF, the most striking thing is that the HF completely decolorizes the blood in the meat. So the meat goes as white as my shirt. So there wouldn't have been red remains coming through the ceiling. After that, they were shown cleaning up the mess on the floor of the corridor, and they seemed to do that quite sensibly, presumably using alkali or perhaps carbonate to neutralise the acid, and they were wearing suitable protective clothing and gas masks, though I'm not sure how easy it is to get gas masks that will completely protect you against HF fumes. I thought that part was reasonably realistic, and then they're shown hosing each other down in children's paddling pools. Though it's not clear why Jesse should have had two identical paddling pools, and why didn't they try and dissolve the 
gangster in the paddling pool in the first place. It was big enough and probably the right sort of plastic. I don't remember. It was Jesse who made the mistake. It was a, They acknowledge it was a mistake to put it in the bath. It was Jesse's foolishness. Yes, I quite, I quite agree. And um, no, but what I mean is that why did they need to go and buy, go out and try and buy a plastic container when they had the inflatable bar, um, paddling pools already? They also ended up apparently by flushing some of the evidence down the drains. And this is actually what Haig did. And there's some sort of rumour that the remains of the body or some remains of the bodies were found down the drains. And there have been other mo mass murderers in the UK who've been caught by bits of body blocking the drains on the, where they live. I think the key thing, and this comes back to what you said about um, Jesse, is that Walter gets really excited and says, Sir Jesse, you didn't follow my instructions. So I think the really important take-home message to any chemists who are watching, particularly one, young ones, is that the instructions are there for a purpose and you've got to follow them. I'm sorry, what were you asking me? Oh, yes, that stupid plastic container I asked you to buy. You see, hydrofluoric acid won't eat through plastic. It will, however, dissolve metal. If Jesse had listened to Walter, he wouldn't have got into the mess, even if it had enough acid. HF attacks glass. Chemically, it breaks the silicon oxygen bonds and forms silicon fluorine bonds and a compound that dissolves away in the liquid HF.